Greetings, everyone! Or should I say, every pony? No? Alright. For some of you who have been subscribed to Sylvia Productions for a while are probably wondering why I'm doing a video on My Little Pony. A question goes at that. You're probably thinking, Zay, what are you doing? You're a Destiny YouTuber. And yes, you'll be right. I have done content on Destiny in the past and still am. However, I've wanted to get more involved in the Brony community for quite a while now. And come on, it's not like I haven't done MLP content before. I mean, there was that one time back in early 2014 when I did that Golden Oaks Library tribute, but that was merely because of the feels I felt when the great tree was obliterated by Tyrick. Oh my no, no, no. I'm okay. No. However, I've wanted to do something like this for quite a while now. And since being back on YouTube and everything, what's better way to do a video like this? Now, I will be continuing on my Destiny videos, there's no doubt about that, but I'll be uploading these types of videos in between. Well, enough channel talk, let's get into this video. With the new Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks finally out after following months worth of teasing and pointless shorts, the film did rather well when compared with the rocky start of the first Equestria Girls. Twilight's back with the other five human doubles of her Equestrian friends, which isn't weird at all, and they even have the ungrateful bitch Sunset Shimmer joining the team from the last movie. But of course, one does not simply have a normal day in human Equestria, since there is once again, through some plot hole, a new type of villainy. And when I say that, I mean that there are three of them. Adagio Dazzle, the power-hungry leader, already ablaze, the one who complains constantly, and Sonata Dusk, the thick one, who is also the fan favourite. Together, they are known as the Sirens, also known as the Dazzlings on Wednesdays. As you would imagine, these three girls are up to no good, as Adagio- <coughs> I mean, the Dazzlings are out to stir shit up with their magic, become famous, and have everyone adore them. Long story shorter, they want to control the world, which is, by the way, essentially every MLP women's plot ever. Aha! I will take my rightful place as ruler of Equestria. Also, Eternal Knight. Ooh, I'm an evil lord of chaos, and I want to control Equestria to look weird. I want to harvest the love in Equestria to feed my drones of battle and marry Twilight's brother. I want to enslave the ponies of the Crystal Empire and build my own empire. And I need more crystals. I don't want this pathetic school. I want Equestria, and I'm not even trying to hide the fact that I want it. Whoops, my seeds of darkness have grown and will invade Equestria. Sorry, I guess? I want Metal! But back to the Dazzlings. However, it's not their cliché plan that I'm here to ramble about, but rather on how they got in the human world in the first place. The film stated that they were originally evil sea ponies from Equestria, who sought to control the ponies all through the land and essentially take over Equestria. But through some amazing plot device, they get banished by Starswell the Bearded to an unknown location. This part we know, but it apparently happened over a thousand years ago. Well, I think Hasbro have a button labelled thousand years ago button, so they press it every time they need some kind of history lesson. So if they are indeed a thousand years ago, then how on earth are they still young, let alone still alive? Well, after some thinking, I think I have two possible theories. Theory number one, they are immortal. And when I say immortal, 
I mean they cannot die through any natural way like illness, poisoning or infection because their bodies can fight it off like it's no one else's business. Ultimately, this would explain why they are still around and look no older than 20. There is, however, one flaw in this theory. When the Dazzlings are first introduced, the way they speak and behave, including their attire, seems to suggest that they haven't been there for very long at all, but rather as if they'd only just popped into the human universe mere days ago. So after some extra theorizing, I came to the conclusion that could possibly explain how the Dazzlings pulled this off. Theory number two, they were stuck in time. Now to help explain what I mean by this, I will use an example to show how this theory works. If we think back to 2011, the fifth installment of the favored Elder Scrolls franchise had released with flying colors since it was one of Bethesda Game Studios' biggest successes. You see, the game's main story involved the use of an Elder Scroll, as you know, to banish the accursed Alduin into the fabric of time itself, almost like being stuck in limbo, which supposedly happened around the Third Era. After banishing him, he didn't return for the most of, of about a thousand years. Sounds familiar? Until reappearing in Skyrim during the Fourth Era. For as long as it took for Alduin to resurface in Tamriel's timeline, it would have felt like mere minutes since he presented no signs of aging since the Dragon Wars. These minor details and sometimes unnoticed fit perfectly with our three subjects. No signs of age and a thirst for revenge. The only difference between Alduin's time leap and the Dazzling's misadventure is one jumps time while the other jumps dimensions. So, as a final verdict, it's entirely possible that when Star Swell banished the Dazzlings, it took over a thousand years for them to reappear, while it would have been only a couple minutes of dimension jumping. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all I have time for for this video, but I hope you enjoyed today's little theory thinking nonetheless. If you did, then click that little like button and comment below to present your own theories on the MLP universe. And I'll see you next time on Destiny. Cheerio!